Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I greet you today in the matchless my name of Jesus. I'm Bishop Jared Hunter, and there is nothing and no one that can do me like Jesus can. I want to declare to you, he is the Lord of my life, that he is my soon coming king, that Jesus is my everything, that I'm in love with Jesus, and I know he's in love with me. My prayer for you on today is that Jesus is also your Lord, that you love him like I love him, that he's good to you. That would make Jesus be our Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. I declare to you, by faith in the name of Jesus. It is Jesus time right now. It is Jesus time right now. Let's get to it. Aren't you glad that Jesus given us the opportunity that we might be together one more time, declare uh, by faith, uh, through grace, that our God is an awesome God. And besides him, there is none other. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we'll be as brief as the Holy Ghost will allow today. I'm so glad that we um, have this opportunity. Though I sent there scarlet, he will make them white as snow. All we got to do is come, let us reason together. Say up the Lord. I want you, if you would, open your Bibles, and I want to look at a <coughs> few, excuse me, a few verses there in uh, the Gospel according to John, uh, chapter number 10. And verse 3, um, I'll start with verse 3. Verse 3, verse 27, and verse 5, in that order. Verse 3, verse 27, and verse 5. And uh, the Bible reads, To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and lead them, leadeth them out. Verse 27, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And a, verse five says in St. John chapter number 10, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers. Uh, I want to talk to you today about it's what you answer to. And so I know we, uh, we've we had this conversation in the past, but we need to uh, revisit this in this regard. Um, Jesus said he calls his sheep by name, that we have been named, that we have been sealed, the Bible said, that we have this, this, this name that's on us, this seal that's over us. And so the, uh, the enemy, there's other people talking, a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. So Jesus says, um, my sheep hear my voice. The problem is that we live in a world that has so much noise. There's so many people talking. It's easy to get confused as to who you are, or better yet, who or what name you respond to. And so, because we are also, we are first Adam, natural, but then the last Adam, uh, Jesus, is a, a quickening spirit, supernatural. That we are, um, that we are not only, we are not only flesh and blood, we're also, um, um, we also are spirit. And so um, this spirit that we have received, this grace that we have received, it is now what we answer to. It is what we respond to. It is people pulling you from who you are, uh, whether it be uh, whether your name is a. Uh, uh, Rick or Paul or, or Susan or Jane, doesn't matter. There's some things that go with that name. And when they call that name, there is some components in that name that causes you to respond because you identify with it. And as soon as we identify with it, we're able to be led into something uh, that we did not intend to. So we have to then change what we identify with. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Former things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. All that means is I change what I identify with. Now that I, since I met Jesus, my whole life has changed. No other voice will I obey. You can talk what you want to talk. You can say what you know about me, but Jesus has brought us a mighty long way. So we need to get better in what we're responding or what or how we're responding. It's what you answer to that matters. They say it's not what they call you. They can call you all kind of names, but you've been bought with the price, washed by the precious blood of the lamb. You are named with a name. And if so, you have to then respond accordingly. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand of sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone, and let everyone, and let everyone. Who, <coughs> who's that mean? Some of y'all, few of y'all know. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's the name we see it with. That's the name we're called by. We're Jesus people. Let everyone who's named his name change what they identify with. Change how they operate. Change how they live. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Let everyone, here's the foundation. The foundation of God, oh my God, standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. Go back to John chapter 10. He said, I know them that are mine. He said, I know them that are mine. I, I, <coughs> I call them by name and they follow me. He calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Uh, when he calls his sheep by their name, they respond to their name. Even though, listen to this, y'all, there's somebody else calling their name. Okay, it's already, it's implicit right there. That's why we read um, 
John 10, chapter number five, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Are y'all hearing me? There's a whole lot of people calling you name, but you calling your name, but you got to understand Jesus has been so good. Uh, you may not be what you ought to be, but you're certainly not who or what you used to be. So therefore, um, you have to watch how you respond according to the name you're being called. And now uh, uh, Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 31 and verse 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, uh, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as weak. But I prayed a prayer uh, that, your fail, that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Hold on, I'm gonna, I want you to hold right there because I want you, I'm gonna add to that here just in a moment. But he says to him, Simon, Simon, I just want to identify the name. He said, Simon, Simon, listen who he's coming for. Satan desires to have you, Simon, Simon. Now hold that thought, hold that thought. Now Matthew 16 verses 15 through 18, he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Y'all know where I'm going right here. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon for Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. You better come on in here. Come on a little closer. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Can I say it again? He said, listen, uh, who do they say that I am? And Peter said, I know you are. Thou art Jesus, the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed to you. Blessed art thou, Simon Borjona. Listen, now that's Simon Borjona for flesh and blood. He said, now you didn't get this by flesh and blood, but my father, this came by way of the spirit. And now he said to them, thou art Peter. What is Peter? Not the flesh and blood. Flesh and blood is still Simon Borjona. But he said, thou art Peter. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What now? Let's go back to Luke 22, uh, 31, 32. Now the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Oh, come on now. Jesus is saying now he refers to him as Simon, Simon, because that's what the devil's calling you. Y'all better hear me right here. That's what he's calling you. He ain't calling you back uh, from holiness and rights. He's calling you from your old stuff, back to your old way of thinking, back to the old man. The old man is death to you. So he calls him back. He said, uh, Simon, Simon, behold, look, look at what's going on in your life. Look at what's happening. I know I'm talking to somebody right here. He's doing all that talking, trying to get you to go back to your old way of thinking, your old understanding and your old lifestyle. But listen, he said, I want you to look out for him. He just want to sift you like we, I want y'all to know right now, this is where I tell you the devil is a liar. He wants to sift you like weak, but Jesus said, but the but is a cancellation of everything the enemy's trying to do. Jesus is the uh, John 10, 10 says the thief coming up, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So in verse Luke 22, verse 32, but I prayed for thee. Oh, my Jesus. Do you know if Christ be for us, who can be against us? Jesus said, but I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted. Strengthen the brother. As soon as you understand what your name is, as soon as you understand wh what you're supposed to respond to, I want you to tell somebody else. Tell somebody else the enemy tried to find me. They tried to find Simon, but Peter is built on a rock. He said, I'm praying the prayer that thy faith fail not, that you understand the calling over your life, that you understand that there is power. In the name of Jesus, wondrous working power, life-changing power, healing power, all power. All power is in his hands. See, now we're talking about how it is that we are now sealed with that name, covered with the name, because we're operating in the name, but we transfer from our name to his name. And now we are Jesus people, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, and uh, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will hear their land. Who? His people. What are his people called by his name? That's how we're Jesus people. Jesus people are called by his name. He said, if my people that are called by my name would respond, come on now. 
Come on now. I know I'm preaching this thing right now. If my people that are called by his name, by my name shall respond. You can say you're Jesus people and not respond to his name. The Bible said at the mention of that name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. You got to understand there's something about that name when it is that you have been called this way, when it is that it, it, it demands a response. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, y'all didn't hear me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, it demands a response. It demands a response. I just can't help myself. He's been too good to me. But he said, if my people, there is a purpose. If my people, which are called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my faith. Understand it's not about me. It's all about Jesus. John said he must increase. I must decrease. It's not about me. It's all about Jesus. Why? Because Jesus said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me that we've been named with the name. And guess what? Sealed with the name, covered with the name, washed with the name. That name is Jesus. That name is above every other name. So when you start calling me all the other name, I don't got to move to it. I don't got to respond to it. Anything Jesus didn't give you, you don't got to accept. You ain't got to accept it. All right, last one. We we brief here to 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 9. Listen to this, but we speak the wisdom of God in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for them that love him, them that are named with that name, sealed until the day of redemption. Jesus' people. Uh, if you go home reading in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, it said, but it's been revealed to us through the, uh, through the Holy Ghost. He's given it to us. He's shared it with us. He's covered us with it. We know now what no man knows the things of, uh, the things of a man, but the man, what man knows the things of the Spirit of God, but the things of God. God, but the spirit of God and therefore we have now been revealed those things that what it means is is that when they come looking for me and they come looking for David they can't find David because David's covered in Jesus and in Jesus there's some other opportunity he said but it is written why why can't I see it why I have not ear heard it and why has it not entered into the mind the heart of the understanding of man I'll tell you why because they talking to the wrong one because I've been translated because now I got what Jesus said I should have now he's got some promises that I can can't see. You can't even imagine it, that the devil can't grab, that the moth can't steal, that it can't be corrupted, it can't be defiled. He's already done it. And all I got to do is respond. He said, look, none of the princes of this world know, because if they had known, oh my Jesus, they would not have, if they had known this hidden glory, the hidden riches, the Bible, uh, the mysteries, if they had known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. They would not have done it, but they didn't know better. He said, but it's written. They can't see it. They couldn't hear it. They couldn't understand it. I'm going to ask you, uh, when you start responding to uh, the old man, that old stuff, the old you, the old woman used to be, that's when you can't hear it. You can't understand it. It's lost to you. But let me bring you back to this other side. Come on over to Jesus' side, and you're going to find out there's some promises. You're going to find out there's some glory. You're going to find out there's some peace. You're going to find out that it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You're going to find out that everything's already paid for, sealed bought with the blood of the lamb. You're going to find out that his promises are irrevocable, unchangeable, immutable. You're going to find out that he's with you from uh, always, that he'll never leave you. You're going to find out he'll never forsake you. It's all in the response, y'all. When you respond to that name of Jesus, you're going to find out everything is already covered. And even more than that, listen, we're going to find out everything going to be all right. Romans 8 and 28, we know all things work together for good, for them that love God, for them that are called according to his purpose. Do you love him? Are you sealed with the name? Can you hear him calling you? If so, you got to know whatever this thing is, you ain't got to listen to it. It ain't going to work. Whatever the death, no weapon form shall be able to prosper. It's not going to work because we are Jesus people. I made the Lord my refuge and most high my habitation. Uh, Psalm 91. Uh, we're Jesus people. I'm going to stop right there.
It means something to know who Jesus is. It means something to know what that means in your life. And it means something to live and represent in that grace. And that's what we're doing. We represent y'all. Listen, I want to give you this last call, this call for salvation. If ever you need Jesus in your life, you need him right now. There's nothing in no one that can do you like Jesus can. He's the best thing that will ever happen to you. I want to give you this opportunity that you might meet him, try him for yourself. I want to declare to you that Jesus came down in the flesh about 2,000 years ago. He suffered, bled, died on the cross. He went down the grave, stayed there three days and three nights. On the third day, he rose again with all power in heaven and in earth. If you believe that with all of your heart, repent of your sins, confess with your mouth that Jesus, he did rise again. You shall be saved. The Bible said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I encourage you, if you have not made Jesus your choice, try him for yourself. Listen, you don't have to love him. He loves you. All you got to do is give him a try, and you'll find out he is like none other. I want to declare to you, he's the best thing that ever happened in my life. And as soon as you try Jesus, you're going to find out. There's none like it on him. I want you to reach out to me if you're making Jesus your choice on today at clj1.org. Let me know that Jesus is doing great things for you, that he's opened the door in your life, that you are, that we might celebrate, magnify him together. Of those of you who are reaffirming yourself to his will, his word, and his way, also I want you to reach out to me at clj1.org. That we might be able to lift up, magnify, and rejoice together at how good our God is. Isn't Jesus good? He is so very good. Listen, believers, I want you to believe with me together. We're going to agree together in faith that our God is still moving, that he cannot fail, that he is doing exactly what he said. So we agree together right now by faith that he's in the midst of all of these circumstances and all these issues. There's someone today who needs to know that Jesus is the deliverer. They have bowed down head. They are overcome with weariness, overcome with fear, overcome with depression, oppression, sadness, heaven and all these things are upon them, but Jesus has paid the price to set them free. So I want you to believe, I want you to believe with me right now. He's moving in the direction. He's breaking the yoke off their life. He's lifting up their bow down heads, restoring their joy. He's renewing their strength. Somebody's being delivered and set free right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to believe with me uh, today that Jesus, he's the healer. So we're going to bring him every sickness, every pain, every disease. I know you got some issues, some stuff. The doctor said this, they found that, but we bring it all to Jesus, declaring that he's our healer, that by his stripes, we were healed. And therefore we claim our healing today by faith and we call it all done. We call it settled in Jesus name. In Jesus' name, we don't just believe he's our healer. We believe that he's there, the healer. Therefore, we know some people and some people who we don't know who uh, is worse than us. And uh, hospice care, palliative care, uh, emergency care, critical care, whatever that care is, we know Jesus cares for them. And we believe that right now he's moving in the direction that he's laying hands on their infirmity. He's touching their sickness, that somebody's being healed, that somebody's getting out of that bed of affliction. Somebody's being made a whole today in the name of Jesus. I want you, if you would, to believe with me that he is still the Savior. That his arms are not short and that he cannot save, that he can save anybody, that he's still doing it, that he's still able, that he's still got all power, that he's moving right now in somebody's direction, that he's touching right now somebody, that somebody's having visitation with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they're sending hands in his wounds, the hands in his feet, that crown of thorn is played on his head, they're being uh, baptized in the blood of the lambs today, their sins are being washed, their transgressions are being forgiven, their iniquities are being blotted out, they're putting Jesus on today and falling in love with him right now and declaring Jesus, he's the best thing that ever happened in my life, if you believe with me on today, that Jesus is healing and he's saving and he's delivering today. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to encourage you. It's giving time in the house of the Lord that we ought to give unto Jesus. Jesus has given unto us. The Bible said, let us not give grudgingly, nor out of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Uh, those of you who uh, uh, have purpose to give on today, I want you to reach out to us at COJ clj1.org there you'll find some avenues that you might be able to give electronically. And we thank Jesus for you in advance. Those of you uh, who cannot give electronically, but you're trying to find a way that you might be able to facilitate um, the uh, submission of your offering there. You can reach out to us at coj1.org. Let us know that you're just trying to, uh, you're trying to do what you purpose in your heart and that we might better facilitate that to help you do what you have prepared to do in the name of Jesus. We thank Jesus for you in advance. Um, those of you who want to mail your offerings, traditional offerings, you want to mail them to the church, you can do so at Church of Jesus, 2356 North Station Street in Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218. Again, that's the Church of Jesus in 2356 North Station Street in Indianapolis, Indiana, 46218. Uh, you can mail the offering there. We thank Jesus for you in advance. Those of you who are giving to the I. Uh, the IIF offering. Uh, we thank Jesus for you. Those of you who are purposing to do so, we thank Jesus for you. Those of you who are still in this thing, hold on and believing by faith that his word cannot come back void. I'm here with you and I thank Jesus for you soon and very soon. So we are, we are encouraged. I encourage you encourage, to encourage one another. Jesus cannot and will not fail. And so we believe in that and we're believing that uh, that time uh, that um, that time is not in our hands, but that Jesus' grace has us covered. And so I thank Jesus for that. Uh, those of you right now and you're here together on the line i want to encourage you in this way jesus never fails 
He never fails. Therefore, all things work together. I don't know always how he's putting it together, but I do know all things work together. So I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're thinking right now. I don't know what the enemy is saying to you right now, but I do know this. What Jesus said, it got to work. If Jesus promised, it got to work. If Jesus said it, if he's, it got to work, it's going to do exactly what he said. It cannot come back, boy. There is no room for failure because that's who my God is. Do you believe it? I believe it with you. And we call it done and settled. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I want you to know that I love you, but Jesus, he loves you best. You don't have to worry about tomorrow because Jesus, he's with you today. Jesus is good. Jesus is good. Yes, he is. Have a beautiful day in Jesus.